In this tutorial, we're going to be learning how to impose the boundary conditions. Uh, so basically what we need to do is just go up to File, New, Boundary Conditions. And then it's going to ask us to select a available T3S object. So we can use Mesh Original or Mesh underscore Levy underscore plus three. Uh, both of these meshes are actually identical. The only thing that's different between them is the elevation attribute that we give we gave to each of these meshes meshes in the last tutorial. Uh, I don't think that it matters which one we use as long as the points are the same. Uh, so along the boundary of the mesh, there's a number of points nodes, um, and as long as the ordering is the same and the number of nodes and their place. Uh, in two-dimensional space is the same. I don't think that it matters which one we use, uh, but we'll go with the mesh underscore original for now. Uh, when we create this object, it appears under the data items again, and then if we drag and drop that into the 2D view, we can see that this is the mesh, uh, but the, the difference is, is that along the boundaries, uh, we have these brown nodes, and in Blue Canoe, the brown nodes are actually just a wall type node. So there's no flow that's coming in or leaving any of these brown nodes. But what we want in this simulation is to have a flow rate come in through the Thule Creek tributary, as well as a flow rate that comes through the Baxter River itself. And then downstream, we're going to use a stage discharge curve um, to impose the water surface level depending on the flow rate that's coming through the boundary. So we have three boundary conditions in total that we want to place in here and I'll just show you how to do that quickly. So let's just start with the Thule Creek up here. Uh, what we do is just basically double click, uh, double click here and then hit shift and then double click down below and then after you just do a right click on the line and then go add boundary segment and in here, uh, this is a open boundary with prescribed flow rate, and then just go OK. Uh, you can see that it's now changed blue, and that blue indicates that it's an open boundary with a prescribed flow rate. Uh, we do the same thing for the Baxter River, double clicking, holding shift, and then double clicking again, and then just right click on that, add boundary segment, and call this a open boundary with prescribed flow rate. Again, that turns green. <clears throat> and then downstream, we do the same thing, but uh, we just double click, shift, double click, and then do a right click on the line, go add boundary segment, and then do a open boundary with prescribed H, and then go OK. So when we use a stage discharge curve, which is common practice when you're modeling a river, uh, you want to use a prescribed H boundary downstream, and then Telemac will uh, prescribe the, the value of the water level depending on the flow rate that goes through it. So that's, that's what we use for that. And then we want to save both of these items. So we'll call this uh, mesh original underscore BC dot CL. That sounds like a good name. And then we'll do the same thing here. Save as... Um, mesh original bc but it's a different name it's a dot cli cli file uh, and then we'll just save those and basically that's everything that we need to do to in blue canoe to actually work with boundary conditions but before we finish up on this tutorial i just want to explain a little bit about the dot cli file that was created uh, so this is the file that was created here, and if we just open that up in Notepad++, we can see that every like all of the nodes along the boundary are listed in this file. So there's 1 to uh, 1,240, and what we can see is that most of them are pretty identical. And, and the 222 here on this side, that indicates a wall boundary node. So each line in here represents a node uh, along the boundary within the domain. And most of them are all walls, which is normal. And then all of a sudden we have these 455, five, which indicate a flow that's coming into the domain. Uh, and you can see that this is, um, what, maybe about 
12 or so nodes that compose this boundary. And if you keep going down further, we're going to hit the next boundary, which is this one, which is for the Thule Creek. And then finally, we end up with the boundary for the downstream end of the Baxter River, which is, are these ones here. And it has a different code. It's 544, which indicates a fixed height. So uh, just a little quick mention of how this is organized. The way that these, the way that your boundary conditions appear in this file are in a counterclockwise manner, starting from the lowest, um, the left most lowest point in the domain. So the very first point in the boundary file is going to be one of these here. Um, selected nodes, if you go up here, there's the global node ID, which is 1,710, which is what we see here, 1,710. Uh, but the boundary node ID is one. So that's our first boundary node. And then if we go right and click on this one, we can see that the global ID is 1,777, which is 1,777, but the boundary node ID is two, which is also what we see here. And then if we continue on the first, if we click on the first boundary node here, we see the is 1,700 or 10, 17,917 uh, with a boundary node of 536. So if we go to the very first boundary node that we see, we see 1,000 or 10, 17,917 and 536 here. And it continues on like that. Uh, and then it just keeps going in a counterclockwise manner. Uh, so you have the global ID of the node and you also have the the boundary node ID, and then these would coincide with that. But what's important to remember is that this, this is our first boundary, uh, and this is our second boundary, and this is our third boundary. Uh, so when you're working with the actual case file in Telemac, which is what we're gonna see in a few tutorials, um, the order is very important as to how you impose the boundary conditions. So just keep that in mind, uh, just the organization of this file. It's a good know about when you're actually working with the .case file that we'll see in a few videos. Um, the next tutorial is going to be talking about varying the local roughness. Um, so say you have want to have different roughness values for the bed over certain regions or sections. I'm going to show you how to do that using the polygon tool. I uh, hope that you see that video. Um, it should be pretty useful for you, especially if you're doing a lot of river modeling. So see you in that one. Bye.